2015 is shaping up to be a pretty good year for games and that means it should also be a big year for Sony and Microsoft's new generation consoles. Let's dig into part one of my two episode series on what Sony and Microsoft can do to win 2015. First up, my argument for the Xbox One. Microsoft put the Xbox One on a really good track in the latter half of this year thanks to two big changes, knocking $50 off the price and removing the compulsory connect. As a result, there's now far less stopping people from picking up the Xbox One. While those unpopular features persisted, it seemed as though more than a few Xbox 360 fans from last generation opted for the PS4. Microsoft certainly paid for its early missteps by losing those fans. 2015 is another story though, particularly given the November NPD sales report, which indicated that more Xbox Ones were sold in the blockbuster month than PS4s, for the first time since the launch of both consoles. Although the Xbox One is still quite a ways behind the PS4 in total sales, it has the games, leadership and ideas to turn it around. Take new Xbox boss Phil Spencer for example, he genuinely seems like a cool dude with a really good idea of the direction to take Xbox. Brought on in March, Spencer has since had the balls to admit the mistakes of the Xbox One's original marketing. He's actively worked to shift the focus of the console back to video games and away from general entertainment. While this is good for the people who are sick of hearing Microsoft tout sports and TV at their 2013 E3 conference, it's also sort of a shame that Microsoft dropped a lot of the focus on the features that they thought would be innovative and unique to the Xbox One. Take the all-in-one entertainment device concept for example. Although it wasn't marketed very well and led gamers to think that Xbox One wasn't all about the games, it was an interesting idea. Microsoft came to their Xbox One announcement presentation with something new. Alright, they weren't all necessarily good ideas, but they were certainly trying to do something different. Now it's safe to assume that we know the Xbox One is all about the games. If Microsoft wanted to sell more consoles, it would be great to see them try and bring some of that all-in-one stuff back without marketing it in a way that makes it seem like they aren't game-centric at all. The console as an entertainment unit concept actually works. The idea of interacting with your tech via voice and motion controls is probably the future. But since we've been burned before by the old poorly functioning Kinect, Microsoft need to prove to us that things have changed. Particularly since Microsoft frequently discusses how essential the Kinect is to the Xbox One experience experience, from the way the console functions to the games and services it offers. It would be a huge loss for Microsoft if it's decided that the Kinect peripheral is unattractive and useless, given it's always been the Xbox's significant differentiator. Microsoft need to remind gamers that Xbox One is unique in the way it functions, the way you can interact with it, and how it integrates with your TV and living room life. One of Microsoft's biggest blunders was not talking about the game, so I'd better not make the same mistake. It's no secret that Halo 5 Guardians will be a huge win for Microsoft when it comes out, and it should attract gamers who haven't been all that interested in the Xbox One just yet, but are fans of the series. With AAA games ahead like Rise of the Tomb Raider, Quantum Break, Crackdown 3 and Platinum Games' Scalebound, alongside indie titles like Inside and Below, the Xbox One should have a nice exclusive 2015 selection, and that's just the stuff that's been announced. What the company seriously needs to work on is continuing to learn from their mistakes. If Microsoft wants gamers to see the Xbox One as the place for games, they need to have more than a handful of great exclusives. If Microsoft wants gamers to see the Xbox One as the place for multiplayer, they'll have to ensure upcoming online games don't repeat the issues of Halo the Master Chief Collection. Fortunately for Microsoft, they've proved that making the right calls, like offering a lower price, putting gamers' interests First, and proving that those interests will be addressed and followed up with action delivers better Xbox One sales. There's a very real future where the Xbox One could be at the center of gamers' living rooms, even those that already include a PS4. But that will require Microsoft to make the services and features that the Xbox One offers feel appealing and essential, without letting them feel like they've abandoned the games. Leave me your thoughts and I'll catch you next week for my PS4 episode.